Hi everybody, I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my YouTube channel, welcome. Hi. Hit the subscribe button and become a regular here. I do a lot of live streaming and also uh, I do some uh, pre-recorded weather casts where I can get uh, a little bit more physical with the maps and draw on them and explain a few things. But I'm trying a, a few things with the live stream this morning. I think maybe we've got the scene transitions and a few other things straightened out so just bear with me i have appreciated everybody's patience through all of this so we're going to start with the tropics and we're going to go to tropical storm don which is no more uh tropical storm don went bye-bye yesterday and uh that uh is because of the fact that uh the tropical conditions just are not very good to sustain tropical storms in the atlantic at the moment um, at least anything beyond a minimal tropical storm, at least. Uh, but uh, last night they wound up down, the Hurricane Center did wind up d downgrading it. And if you look on the latest satellite loop, and you can kind of see why. Look at look at what's happened to it. It's just really got absolutely sheared apart. Uh, a lot of the uh, clouds and the thunderstorms are have been blown away to the e to the west. Uh, thanks to uh, very strong trade winds that come in off of the coast of South America. And that's one of the reasons why you don't get a lot of systems that do very well in terms of strengthening in the Eastern Caribbean. Every once in a while, you do get a setup that's favorable, but this certainly is not one of them. Now, out to the east of that, we have another tropical wave. Looks like uh, it's gotten a little curvature to it during the overnight, uh, but... Uh, the Hurricane Center still ranking this as only a 30% chance of developing into uh, anything. And that kind of makes sense with what's going on. Here's another look at uh, Tropical Storm Don. Uh, you can see it here uh, on the uh, close-up uh, satellite view. And uh, again, the uh, shearing uh, really kind of took it apart and it's all, you know, a done deal. So we're going to uh, just now move a bit forward and uh, talk, talk to you about, well, why is this keep happening? Well, the water vapor imagery today is really a good ex example of how, what kind of uh, conditions uh, not to have in the tropics uh, if you want the tropical storms and hurricanes uh, are running around. And we don't, so we kind of like these. Um, conditions that we see here and look what stands out again all this dry air that covers much of the South Atlantic south of 30 degrees north all the way down to 15 degrees north you've got this one tropical wave that's kind of uh, holding itself together in its own little world but there is just way too much dry air uh, you can see what's happened to uh, tropical storm Don what's left of that getting ripped apart uh, with the winds coming in off of South America. And at the same time, you've also got these two very strong upper lows, particularly this one that is sitting in the central Atlantic. I mean, it's just creating this monumental zone of, of strong shear across much of the uh, Atlantic south of 30 degrees north. So until we get those, up, those upper lows out of the way, we're going to continue to see conditions that really are not conducive uh, for tropical storm formation. It just is not going to happen. Uh, so we're going to take a look now over at the Pacific side, and you can see this is what's uh, now left of Hurricane Fernanda. Actually looks maybe a tad better this morning on the satellite, just a little bit, but it doesn't matter. It's kind of one of these fluctuations in strength as it heads on a downtrend because uh, this thing is going to weaken and continue to weaken. And uh, that is, should be uh, no surprise now that it's in the colder waters of the Pacific. And uh, when we look at the uh, Hurricane Center's uh, forecast track here, you can see it right there. You know, here are the Hawaiian Islands, and it's forecasted rapidly weaken into a tropical storm and then into a remnant tropical depression and pass northeast of the big island of Hawaii. I don't see any reason to disagree with that idea. And when we look at the tropical Pacific, in terms of the uh, water vapor imagery, um, there's three systems here. This is Tropical Storm Greg right there. This is Tropic. This is Hurricane Fernanda. Here are the Hawaiian Islands, and this is a tropical depression uh, that is actually, if you look at how the clouds, how the moisture is getting blown away from west to east, the outflow from Fernanda is shearing the depression 
and eventually the outflow from Greg is going to take its toll on this too. So conditions for that depression to, uh, are, are very unfavorable for it to develop. It seems to be holding its own, but that's pretty much the best you're going to get out of that because eventually Greg may wind up passing uh, within 200 nautical miles of the depression. And sometimes what happens is that the stronger system absorbs the weaker one. And that is always a possibility. But Greg in, in and of itself is, a, uh, is not a particularly impressive tropical storm. Um, it's not going to be able to strengthen either very much because of the fact that um, conditions are not very favorable. But notice even in the Pacific, you've got uh, a lot of dry air that runs from the central Pacific all the way down to Hawaii. It's like this giant sh uh, safety zone that sets up. And east of there, you have the tropical Pacific being very, very active. Uh, but, um, you know, these systems have a really tough time getting to Hawaii uh, because of th this and because of the fact that usually north of 20 degrees north, there's something going on in the Pacific that's creating some kind of shearing. And we can see it here with these clouds blowing from west to east. All right, so enough of the tropics. I want to just take a look real quick at what's going on across the U.S. because, you know, one of the places this spring and summer, which has been a, a, um, a real bonanza for severe weather, has been the upper Midwest, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, parts of uh, Iowa, been getting uh, waves of severe thunderstorms one after another, which kind of makes sense because they've been sort of on, they've been on the edge of the northern jet stream from Canada that's been trying to bring down some cooler air masses. And on the other side of that, you've got the big upper high in the west that's producing heat wave conditions, and they've been kind of sitting right in that boundary zone, uh, which has caused them to get uh, severe weather uh, on an almost regular basis. And the, so actually, the Storm Prediction Center of the Weather Service has raised the – actually just had a marginal risk yesterday for this area, but they kind of – uh, went off the deep end this morning, and they have a slight risk with an with a fairly large area of enhanced risk from eastern South Dakota through Minnesota into western Wisconsin. So that and that slight risk, by the way, goes all, all the way to Chicago and into northern Illinois. So uh, it looks like the upper Midwest is going to get uh, a large amount of uh, you know a lot of potential for a, a severe weather certainly. And uh, as far as we're concerned, uh, as we look at our local radars. Um, this morning, there really isn't too much going on. It's just very quiet on the local radar scene. And when we look at the regional radar, also very, very quiet uh, with, uh, I think, a minimal amount of scattered afternoon thunderstorms that are going to develop uh, today. Uh, there just really isn't a mechanism to trigger off anything more than that. So uh, we'll look at high temperatures, which are going to be mostly in, near or just over 90 over a good portion of eastern Pennsylvania through southern New England. And even on Long Island, temperatures are going to make it up into the upper 80s, except perhaps uh, on the uh, east end. And I think Thursday looks like a, a slightly hotter day with temperatures reaching up to about 94 or 5 in some places across uh, eastern and southeastern Pennsylvania, central and southern New Jersey, uh, near or just over 90 or even a few low 90s across the Hudson Valley and up into um, southern New England. So, you know, this is just kind of the typical summertime, mid-July nonsense that we're, we're seeing. And, you know, I, I really don't see too much in the long range to change that idea uh, with the trough in the east and the ridge in the west. But I will say that, you know, some of these troughs are going to be more amplified than others. And I think some of these cooler air masses um, that are going to start coming down uh, as we get deeper into August um, are, you know, going to be a little bit more robust as time goes on. So um, it'll be interesting to see if that pattern holds, and it'll be interesting to see if that pattern holds um, with regards to uh, any kind of tropical systems, because if you have a trough in the east, you know, there's always the possibility that that trough could set up far enough west to open up an alleyway up the east coast. Not saying that's going to happen, but, you know, you have to consider that possibility. So let's go to the chat now. Um, as we say, uh, good morning to Abedin Durakovic and uh, to my buddy Jason Schaefer, who is sitting Shiva for a tropical storm, Don. Hello to Christopher and uh, Anne-Marie Charlot. Um, rain all night in Trinidad and some flooding. Yep, you sure did uh, with uh, uh, the, sh the rains from um, 
Tropical Storm Don, which should be pretty much done with, unless there's some, there's probably some residual showers going on on the east side. But, um, you know, went through as a minimal tropical storm, and thankfully that's all it was. Uh, just curious of if the haziness on the satellite loop in the Atlantic is Saharan dust. Some of that is cr cruise ship man that has been uh, ongoing for um, the last several weeks. A lot of Saharan dust has been coming off, and that is a problem. Good morning to PlayStation Boss and to Dapper Manatee64 and uh, may, may turn our turn for the couple of, of uh, MCSs tomorrow night and over the weekend. Yeah, it might be. You know, I, I'm thinking, uh, you know, at least um, today um, there's not going to be too much of that. Um, yeah, but uh, we could see uh, some uh, pretty decent uh, – cells develop uh, tomorrow night and uh, particularly i think on friday and maybe not so much saturday but perhaps on sunday so um we'll uh, we'll see how that goes and uh, uh abaddon is a nice beach day today sure is uh definitely head to the beaches with uh, lots of sun especially if you're on long island new jersey shore go uh, go right to it i gotta work so it's gonna be a little tougher for me uh, an Agawa mass got 3.4 inches of rain from Christopher. You know what, Christopher? Yesterday after late yesterday afternoon and evening, I noticed there was a narrow east-west band of of heavy thunderstorms that lined up right along the Massachusetts-Connecticut border. So you got uh, pounded by some of those, and uh, not a surprise. I'm thinking today that the thunderstorms will be much more scattered in nature, but any one cell could wind up uh, getting strong. And I think the main threat from any uh, thunderstorms is going to be heavy rain. Um, and not um, any kind of uh, straight line wind uh, damage, or I don't think there'll be anything in terms of, of, uh, of severe weather. Um, but, you know, could there be a local heavy, heavy thunderstorm that produces some flash flooding? Yeah, absolutely. Will 99% of you uh, get away with not seeing it? Yep, I think most of, the, most of you will probably not see um, any shower or thunderstorm activity. All right, folks, we'll leave it at that. I think the uh, this version of the live stream proved to be um, successful. Uh, Abedin Durakovic wants to know, what time and channel can I watch your forecast on TV? Okay, well, you can watch me during the week, Monday through Friday, beginning uh, most days at 5 o'clock, sometimes not till 7, on Fios 1 News Long Island and Fios 1 News New Jersey. Um my uh, colleague uh, and good friend, meteorologist Joe Rayo, is on Fios One News Hudson Valley. Um, you can go to the Fios One News website and stream the newscast live from there, FiosOneNews.com. Uh, and then there's three zones, Long Island, New Jersey, Hudson Valley. And uh, sometimes, <clears throat> every once in a while, I'm on WPIX-TV in New York. Uh, don't have any days schedule anytime soon, but every once in a while, I do get a couple of days and I will uh, let you know so you can watch me there as well. And, of course, you can always catch me on here. You can catch me on my Facebook page, Meteorologist Joe Chaffee, and on my website, MeteorologistJoeChaffee.com. And um, I appreciate everybody being here today. Uh, I can't tell you what, what how much fun I'm having uh, with all of this. And I, I just keep thinking ahead to expanding it and, and maybe doing different things uh, down the road. Uh, as um, you know, we get a little bit more time to really look at how all the te the technical stuff works. The weather stuff for me is the easy part. It's all this technical stuff that I've got to master, and um, I, I'm really appreciative that I've, I've been able to grow my channel the way I have. So if you're new, um, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, and then you can be here every day if you'd like. And uh, thank you, uh, Thomas Bullock and Christopher. Appreciate uh, all of you and all the time. That you spend here. Have an, an awesome day and uh, be safe. Uh, try to get some beach time and we will um, post as uh, conditions warrant. And that's usually once a day, but when weather gets rough, it might be much more than that, especially now that I can do this live stream with relative ease.